Hey guys, I know it's been a hot minute since I've done a video, but as I said in the last video I did, I was at a convention, uh, which was awesome. I was there all four days. I had the premium pass at MegaCon over in Orlando. I just, I literally just got back as I'm making this video, and I'll show you all the cool stuff I got, which was a lot, and um, trust me, it was a lot, and we're going to have a lot to talk about. But before I do, I just want to say a couple things, uh, talk about the con itself. Uh, con was fun. Problem was, it was very disorganized. It was, this felt like the most chaotic it's been in a while, and I don't know if that's because of the COVID restrictions, which is, like, yeah, everyone had to wear a mask, but even, like, the staff was not enforcing that rule, and it got very, like, if you really didn't want to get sick like I did, you were basically, like, paranoid, but you had to eat, so you had to, like, take the mask off to eat, and, well, I know, it's Orlando, there's literally places you could walk and eat, but, like, it's a pain, especially when you did cosplays all week, like, when you you did cosplays all week, it's a pain, and, yeah, I was, for those wondering, I was for first day... I only did three, I didn't cosplay Thursday, but I did do Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So Friday, I was, I mean, yeah, Friday, I was um, Joey from Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Saturday, I was I was Kilgrave, a.k.a. Purple Man, from, of course, Marvel, slash Jessica Jones, which is also Marvel. And finally, today, Sunday, I did Castiel from Supernatural. So that was all around fun. But yeah, getting back to the point of hand, like, it was very disorganized. I had the premium pass, and no one knew what was going on. The staff wasn't talking to security, security wasn't talking to staff. Even staff wasn't talking to each other. Like, po case in point was that um, we were supposed to be let in at a certain time, like an hour earlier than everyone else. But, every but the staff members were like, we're not letting anybody in. They were getting, like, physically, like... Like, people were, like, they were putting their hands on people with the premium pass and pushing them back. I was like, what the fuck? Um, until someone had to come over and literally yell, no, you idiot, let them in. Like, I'm not even joking. Someone had to yell, you idiot, let them in. Um, yeah. So it was very, I don't know if it was about the, if it was COVID or just it was so disorganized. Because this convention was like hell or high water, it was going to happen. Um... So there is that. And also the meetups were also chaotic. Um, they were fun, but chaotic because no one knew what was going on. Like no one was talking to each other and no one was really, no one was really like, just no communication. I'm sorry, I'm tired and scatterbrained. So there was that too. Food was so-so. Um, if you had a map, God help you because I'm, I'm, some of the booths were changed. It was, it, this was a mess. Now, you may be thinking, I had a shit time at MegaCon, and not and day one was not fun. I will admit, day one, you know, getting there, getting situated was not fun. However, I think there were some elements that made me go, it wasn't that bad. Got to make some new friends, especially one person in particular who was uh, uh, Boff. Now, if you don't know who Boffin is, Boff is a very popular cosplayer here on YouTube who I actually have followed. And I ran into them when they were, when they were cosplaying, when she was cosplaying... Uh, Cusco, and she was very nice. She was very sweet. Um, I thought she would just like not have time for for me or anyone else, and just kind of like pass on. I was like, okay, she's too big of a she's too big of a person. She's gonna roll past me. No, she was really excited to be around people. We hung out the entire like for a good several hours, um, and we met up again on Sunday when she was cosplaying Belle. Which, by the way, Boff. First off, she subscribed to my channel, and I thought that was really awesome. So, if Boff, if you're watching this, thank you so much for hanging out with me. It was really cool to hang out with you and, you know, give a kiss to Sherlock for me, will you? <laughs> um, go subscribe to them if you haven't already. Um, very cool channel. A very cool cosplay channel. Um, yeah, just all around nice per nicest person I could have met at the con. Met into some other friends as well. Um, made some other friends and we no lie, like Friday we just I just ran into some new people and just literally talked shit about the con for about a good two hours. And then we're like, well we'll just come back Saturday. And Saturday, same there, Sunday, um, made some friends. Um, so I think that there was a lot more good than um, bad. I think the good outweighed the chaoticness, but if this happens again, I'd really... Because MegaCon is getting so corporate. Like, we would literally talked about, like, how this con was feeling more like a shopping mall than it was, like, a fun time. Now, hopefully by May, by next year, by May, this that will be changed, and the convention will be a little more structured, because this was powering through a lot of shit. I, I want to give a benefit of the doubt because of what's been going on with the new COVID cases. Because here in Florida, it's, it's literally the fucking Wild West. So, yeah. Anyway. 
So let's talk. So I guess let's t- talk enough about the bad. We've talked about enough about the con itself. You're not you're not here to see that, and you've been here for five minutes. You're like, get to the shit, get to the shit you got. And guys, I got a lot of shit. I don't even want to look at my debit card. I know I still have money, thank God, because I knew when to pace myself. I knew when to like pull the reins and go like, no, 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 you don't need that. <laughs> so yeah, so let's let's get started. Um, hang on. Sorry, I really needed that. <laughs> yeah, such a professional channel, I know. Anyway, let's get started with the coolest thing I got on the last day. And that is this. Now, if you don't know what this is, this is a statue of the Lawgiver from the classic Planet of the Apes movies, which I'm a huge fan of. I love the classic Planet of the Apes movies. And when I saw this, I was actually about to get a Lament configuration um, for, like, it was a $40 Lament configuration. There's, like, weight to it. It wasn't, like, a little box. It was, there was some weight to it. Now, you couldn't move the box or whatever, but then I perused the rest of the guy's st- thing, and I saw this Lawgiver statue and there was a bigger one for 40 this was the for 30 and i was like you know what <laughs> i have zero plan of the aside from one caesar pop figure i have zero planet of the ape stuff so i really wanted to have some planet of the ape stuff in my room so this was perfect so i absolutely like i still think this is the coolest thing of having the lawgiver and there was also a, a bust of ursus which i was contemplating on but i was like no lawgiver so, there you go. Um, there's the lawgiver. Um, moving on, I got coffee, believe it or not. I got actual coffee called Comics Coffee. These guys are from uh, uh, Fort Myers. Uh, really cool people. They gave me both for $20. It's, it was usually 40 but it's like, we don't want to drag this home. Um, they gave me a free sample for both, and I was like, I, I want to take both. And I said, you know what? Take 20, we don't want to drag all this back, so... Yeah. So take two for 20 instead of 40... Like, I think it was 48 for both? Or 38 for both? I can't remember. It was a lot. Um, so this is... This was really cool. I really like this. This is, a me- this is the medium blend. This is the light blend. I desperately need coffee in my life, so... If it hasn't been so obvious by the sound of my voice, I'm, I'm in desperate need of coffee. <laughs> So, there's that. Also, this is about to get very crowded, so I hope you all, I uh, hope the claustrophobia in you doesn't completely get <laughs> get in the way. Um, anyway, so let's talk about some really fun stuff. So, uh, I got to meet some people. I didn't meet everybody. You know, people like Ron Perlman was there, Michael Rooker, uh, a lot of people were there. But I got to meet two people, because the budget allowed, and I got to splurge, I decided to splurge on meeting, you know, getting some new autographs to my collection. And it was two people I've always wanted to meet. Um, and the first person I got to meet, he was on Friday, was Christopher Sabat. This is, a, I got to meet him, he was the nicest guy. Like, seriously, he was, like, before, he was getting in line, he apologized for the long wait, and was m- talking to people and shaking hands in the line. Now, keep in mind, we were all masked. He was vaccinated, we were all fully masked, so hopefully that doesn't backfire. But he was also talking to someone who was, had to use a, um wheelchair to get around like they were in line for a long time and he actually got to talk to he talked to them a lot and i was like that's this is a generally good person so i've heard a lot of good things about sabbath it was nice to see that he even talked to me for a short time and said i hope you're enjoying the con like you know it's generic stuff but like dude had a long line and he had to get through people so yeah but it felt like genuine like he's actually like it was a general nice thing and here it is young tyler you can be a hero chris sabbath so, of course, everyone gets Vegeta and All Might stuff, so it's all good. And next is, believe it or not, I got to meet Austin St. John, the OG Red Ranger. Yeah, he was so cool. He had a little booth that he was manning himself. This is probably the most expensive thing, because I also had a picture with it. So, this was the most expensive, uh, I think it was about $110. That was 50 for Savage, just for the autograph, but... Yeah, this was really cool. I I've always wanted to meet Austin St. John, you know, all the Power Rangers. Even um Karen Ashley, I think that's her name, the second yellow, yellow Ranger. She was with him as well as well as the Silver Overdrive Ranger. They're all in one booth together. It was cool. Um but no, this was a lot of fun. I thought this was really cool. He was so nice. He, uh, John was so nice. He talked to people for like and it didn't again, it didn't feel like you had to be there or like you had to 
Like, it didn't feel like he was making it a job and, like, annoyed by people. He was generally like, hey, what's up? You know, I'm happy to be here. You know, happy to meet the fans. Um, this, just the coolest guy. So, I'm going to get this framed as ASAP along with the Sabbath. Um, Christopher Sabbath picture. Anyway. So, moving on. I'm going to show you some uh, prints. Not prints. Prints. <laughs> Oh, that all just spilled out. Yep, I am such a professional channel. <laughs> anyway. So, so they're all from different artists, and I can't remember them all. Some, A few, though, are from some of the pictures on the wall, like the Mass Effect Gargoyles and uh, Black Butler in Castlevania. Those are a lot of these. I'll, show, I'll point those out. Uh, th such being, uh, this is actually, I got this from my dad. He loves Rick and Morty probably more than I do, so I got that for him. Um, as well as I got this Maleficent, because my mom's a huge fan of Maleficent, so I got this for her. Um, yeah, she's really obsessed with Maleficent, so uh, I saw this and I was like, there you go. That's, <laughs> that's something for mom. And since I have Z uh, not a lot of Fantastic Four stuff, um, I got this. Um, this beautiful Fantastic Four Im image right here. And... Yeah, it's got, like, you've got Frankie Nova over here. You've got Galactus, Silver Surfer, Fantastic Four. I, For those who don't know, I don't think I've ever talked about this, but the Fantastic Four is my favorite superhero team. So any chance I get to have more stuff with the Fantastic Four, it's all, it's all good in the neighborhood with me. So I think some of these are mixed up, but I will, pow I will quickly run through all the prints that I have. Um, the, the other remaining prints. So, uh, first off, yeah, Doom Slayer. Until it rip and tear, until it's done. Um, Cowboy Bebop. Yep, see you, Space Cowboy. This is all from that, or, I can't remember their name, but it was a husband-wife team from Chicago. And they did, like I said, the Garrus you see on the wall, the Gargoyles one as well as the Black Butler and uh, Castlevania. Yeah, so this is all them. I, I think that I got the most print from them because they do such a good artwork. Or they do such good artwork, so. Um, then, Demetrescu, you know, we stand for Giant One. Don't judge me. Don't you fucking judge me. <laughs> Spider-Man. Now, this is one Chris actually last year, when 2019, when, when Chris came to, our, went to Florida to Megacon, he actually got this, and they actually had this. I was like, you know what? This was really cool. I didn't get it last time, so I was like, I really want this Spider-Man on my wall. Uh, then we have Junko Inoshima, you know, because your boy's now Danganronpa trash. <laughs> um, Shishomaru. Yeah, this is a good one, too. I love this one. Um, and finally, Pennywise. And this was the same group, so the next one's going to be totally different. They also... This other group, oh, I wish I got names. I'm so tired. I'm <laughs> and Pennywise, yeah. So Pennywise, and this is from a different artist. These next few. Ugh, sorry, just ugh, I'm so disorganized. Um, we got this kick-ass Spawn one right here. This was so cool. Just yeah. Oh, this was a free poster they gave the premium package. So I love this Jason Fabic. Uh, Superman uh, poster. I love this one. It's official DC content. I think DC did something with them to... I don't know. I'm tired. <laughs> Is it obvious I'm tired? And Godzilla. You know, you can't... You know me. I gotta have some Godzilla stuff in there. And this one was awesome. I saw this. The Icons of Horror picture. Yeah. Especially was Ice Nine Kills' new album. Have I mentioned I love the new album so far? I haven't? Oh, I fucking love it. <laughs> so... There you go. And finally, for the last print, is for all you Ed, Ed and Eddie fans out there. Boom. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway, so there's all the prints. Love those. Oh, real quick, I want to show this off. This is Stan Bucks. Uh, there was an actual Grunkle Stan cosplayer who was, when you, after you took his picture, he would give you Stan Bucks. From the ship, from the summer ween episode, I thought that was so funny. So this was really fun. I thought that was a really cool little added thing. Anyway, so let's move on now to the next stuff. 
<laughs> yeah, it's, has it been obvious? This is a, such a such a well put together show. Okay, where do I, where do I, where do we begin? <laughs> Unboxing videos? <laughs> Not here, baby. Anyway. Uh. So, where do we begin? Oh, this was another thing they gave to the convent, to uh, the premium holders, was a uh, fan expo uh, exclusive cover of Wolverine number one. The artwork was done by Clayton Kane, who was at the convention, and you could get it signed. Now, the reason I didn't get it signed was because they gave me this comic a day late, and when I went back to see Clayton, and Clayton Kane wasn't there, so when I went back, Clayton Kane was there, and I forgot the comic at, at the hotel room. So, <sighs> yeah, it was, uh, it was annoying. <laughs> that was, it was, uh, that was so close, but this is, that was really cool. So, um, anyway, so these two were also free. They're not pop figures, and I don't know what to do with them. They're called, um, shorts. They're like these, Dis this little Disney apparel, and, uh, one for the artist who, uh, who the uh, creator of these, uh, drew, uh, had his signature on the goofy one, and your boy managed to snag Donald as well, because they completely forgot I was there for the first time, so I was like, here, take this other one, and I'm like, okay, I'll take both. I don't know where I'm gonna put them, but they're mine. <laughs> uh, I I say no. I never say no to free shit. <laughs> that's a that's a. There's something you don't. Know, there's something you, new you don't know about me. I will never say no to free shit. Oh, and I'm pretty sure none of you do too. Anyway, so you know me. I got some pop figures. Actually, not a lot. I actually got like a a ton last time, like a ton last convention. I think I got more pops than comics uh, the last time around, but I did get a lot of comics. This time it was a lot of comics, not a lot of pops. Probably because I'm running out of space. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. Um, first two are Ozai and Zhao from the new wave of Avatar figures. Uh, Tylee and Suki are being sent to me as of this recording to my, by my friend uh, Jason Voorhees2011. He's sending me Suki and Tylee along with a few others. Um, new Ultraman pop figure. I have Father of Ultra, but now I have uh, Baltan. If you guys know, and if you guys remember, Baltan is my favorite of the Ultraman kaiju. So I was really excited to get Bal find Baltan. Um, yep. And finally, for the pop figures, um, yeah, finally for the pop figures, we have Frankenstein. My, the second Universal Monster I have in the collection. Uh, mostly because it's very hard. I only have Invisible Man, and you guys know how much I love the, the Universal Monster, so this was really cool to get. <laughs> Ugh. Too much stuff, not enough bed. <laughs> so let's get to the stuff you really came here for. And that is... Uh, the comics. Which, actually, I only got comics from two places. Oh, I forgot. A little free lanyard for the uh, pass. Another free, like, a free water jug, which the cap is off. Oh, there it is. Ta-da. This actually was really cool. I got, uh, um, this was a nice little thermos. It's actually got some heft to it. Um, oh, also got some new shirts. B um, it's usually a, 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 a booth, word got away from me, that is at every convention, and they sell these shirts that I've worn. Some, they actually, if you guys have been around the channel, you've seen me with a Dragon Ball Z shirt, which parodies the Straight Out of Compton one, as well as the, the Green Ranger shirt. Those two came from this booth. But this time I went Avatar-themed. Starting with Water Tribe, Water Tribe, yep, Southern Water Tribe, and uh, 
this kick-ass Avatar Aang one, which I really liked. So, yeah. So let's get on to comics, because I'm pretty sure you're all here to see the comics. Which, there are a lot. <laughs> so let's get through the first one, uh, the first few I've got here. Kicking off with Monsters Unleashed. Monsters Unleashed is this, was this big event that was basically Destroy All Monsters meets... Uh, yeah, it was Destroy All Monsters meets the Marvel Universe. I've, want, I've always wanted to read this on a whole. Now I finally have it. It was literally part of like a Get 4 for 20 deal. I saw this and I was like, I'm taking it. I'm taking this comic. Um, next up we have Acts of Vengeance. Uh, the Marvel Universe is the tie-in to Acts of Vengeance storyline where the Marvel villains all switch heroes. So this collects a lot of the comics. Um, I've been looking for this. I think, I, yeah, this was a, a deal. Like, this guy was selling them for cheaper, like, discounted prices. And I was like, yeah, I want to read Acts of Vengeance. So we got some also some Hellboy. I've been meaning to collect more and more Hellboy in my life because I, I, I love the character. I just, it's really hard to get a hold of Hellboy stuff because of how weirdly expensive it is half the time. So we've got Hellboy Volume 2, Wake the Devil, and Hellboy and the BPRD 1953. It's a little banged up. Anyway. Ugh. So, there you go. Uh, King in Black, Symbiote Spider-Man. This is the King in Black's tie-in with Symbiote Spider-Man. This is, I've wanted, I've not, uh, I love Peter David, but I hate Greg Land. And this was a comic I wanted to read. Um, if you guys have follow are following um, the fan fiction universe Infinity Verse, which me and my friend Jason Voorhees 2011 do together, this was the comic inspiration for Savage's Multiverse. What this is is a tie-in sort of where uh, Spider-Man, who still has the Venom symbiote at the time, teams up with Black Knight, uh, Monica Rambeau, Captain Marvel, The Watcher, Rocket Raccoon and Kang the Conqueror, as well as Ulick the Rock Troll, to fight uh, Null in his first attempt to attack, attack Earth. Which is funny in hindsight, because this is literally like Spider-Man teaming up with people they're pimping out for the MCU. Oh, Kang the Conqueror, get ready to see him in, Mar in a Marvel movie, and maybe a Loki show. Uh, what's that? Uwatu's here? Well, go check out What If. Monica Rambo, You better get ready for the Marvels, as well as WandaVision. Um... Rocket, don't forget Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, and Black Knight, he's going to be in Ter Eternals. That's literally what this is, is have Spider-Man in a team with literally every freaking person who's get going to be in Disney Plus <laughs> or in a Marvel movie. Oh, man, but I really love this odd team up, and um, Chris is going to be sending me King in Black, the main event in trade. So if there was any tie-in I wanted to read, it was going to be this one because this was so bonker. This seems so bonkers. Next up, we have Transformers Spotlight, number uh, volume two. I have volume one, so now it's nice to have the second volume here. And the, um, by a lot of it done by Simon Furman, so this is going to be cool. And following that, we have Mr. Miracle by Tom King. One of the most gut-punching comics ever, and now I'm going to read it and probably cry. <laughs> oh, okay. So, next stack of comics. I think that there was only... Yeah, th there's only one more other pile. Okay. So next up, we have Harley and Ivy meet uh, Betty and Veronica. This was written by Paul Dini. Um, this was a cro the first DC Archie Comics crossover before Batman 66. Um, and I wanted to read this one, because this is I love Paul Dini, and this comic is supposed to be just a ton of fun. So, having Archie meet, ba uh, you know, Harley and Ivy. That sounds awesome. Next up, we have Future Quest Volume 1 and 2. Uh, Chris was going to send me these, but I found these, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to just grab them and save him uh, the trouble of trying to find them. So, it doesn't, uh, you know. Um, this was the big share, the 12-issue uh, tw uh, uh, big shared Hanna-Barbera universe that was supposed to be like the MCU uh, written by Jeff Parker, who I think is severely underrated as a writer, so I was very excited to read the uh, to get these and get both volumes. Um, so I'm really excited to re read that. Uh, finally, for the crossovers, we have 
He-Man he versus Injustice, or Injustice versus Masters of the Universe. This is the sequel to He-Man Thunder, the He-Man Thundercats crossover. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Anyway, so there's all for the crossovers. Next up, we have four of the five volumes of Sunstone by S Stefan Sijic, who this comic is a little is pretty adult, but it's. It's a very beautiful comic, as I'm told, and I've always wanted to read it. Not because of the stuff. If you know the comic, then you know what stuff is in here. But, like, I've always wanted to read it because Stephen Selchik is actually a very good writer as well. And this is supposed to be, like, a beautiful story despite the content that's in it. Um, so I was very, so I don't... They didn't have Volume 3. They uh, But they had the other four volumes. Volumes 1, 2, 4, 5. So now it's my quest to find Volume 3. Uh, to complete the series. But anyway. So yeah, Sunstone. Don't think less of me. It was a very... That's a very re well-regarded comic. So let's get on to the last few. Um, uh, first up, we have Star Wars Target Vader. This is a... Uh, uh, miniseries that Marvel did a little while ago. Um, I wanted to read this. This was also pretty cheap to get at the booth I found this at. This is, it, this actually reminds me a lot of Star Wars and the Ninth Assassin, where someone hires a bounty hunter, a professional killer, to get, to kill Vader in revenge for something they did. Anyway. Um, next up we have Invisible Woman, Partners in Crime. This is the Mark Wade uh, Invisible Woman miniseries. I've been wanting to read this because it's, it's like a spy comic. Of having Invisible Woman being like a spy for Shield in an or like in a, a lost adventure with her, that was really awesome. The fact that Mark Wade is writing this was really cool. Um, next up, we have Doomsday Clock, the complete series in trade in paperback. Um, yeah, Doomsday Clock. I've already reviewed this comic because I've read the issues online, but I wanted to have the actual comic um, for posterity's sake. So, yeah, this should be. This should be good. Yeah, this was a good idea. Um, anyway. So, moving right along, we have uh, Acts of Evil. This was... Acts of Evil was kind of like a follow-up to Acts of Vengeance, where, um, again, heroes ch switching villains. And these are like these eight one-and-done stories uh, within annuals. They aren't really connected. It's just villains switching with heroes. And it's like Miss Marvel versus Super Scroll, Bullseye versus She Hulk, Wolverine versus Morgan Le Fay, Kang versus Moon Knight, uh, Punisher versus Brood, Spider Gwen versus Arcade, uh, Deadpool versus Nightmare. Um, trying to remember the other ones. Uh, hang on, I'll just I'll just look. Oh yeah, Venom versus Lady Hellbender, and I think that's all of them. Yeah. So this is, it's I've read I've actually been reading this one I've actually been reading uh, Acts of Evil and a lot of the stories I'm halfway done with it and it's, actually the stories have been really good so far. Um, next up we have Conan Battle for the Serpent Crown and Conan the Serpent War, uh, both uh, cool Conan and the Conan and the Marvel Universe comics I've been wanting to read. Uh, Chris actually sent me the first issues for both, and I really enjoyed them. So when I saw I could get them in trade for cheap, I was like, I'm getting these. So, yep. Um, so there you go. I think that is it. That is a lot of stuff on my bed. <laughs> that is just a ton of stuff. Uh, all in all, great convention, uh, Boff. I hope you. I hope you're still watching this. Thank you again so much for hanging out with me. Subscribe to her channel. Uh, her and her girlfriend Jazzy are completely awesome. Go check out their channel, and um, hope you all had a good time. And to those who have went to MegaCon, um, hope you all had a good time, despite how disorganized it was. And I hope you know. I didn't keep you guys waiting too long. You know, I know I was gone for four days, but I needed this. I needed to get away from everyone. I literally needed this vacation or I was going to lose my sanity. That's, that's was, that was what was going to happen. I needed this. So, yeah. I, so, I'm going to post this video and then I'm going to fall asleep. We'll probably eat dinner. You know what I mean. I'm dead ass tired. Anyway, so once again, I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the multiverse.